Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying the PW5 doing low altitude releases. It's all part of your training. We do it often in your learning curve. We'll do it as low as 200 feet above the ground, something you wouldn't do in a regular GA a craft, would you? And this is the PW5. The PW5 makes an excellent cross-country trainer. The glider has about a 15 meter wing or 45 feet. It weighs empty at about 400 pounds with a gross weight up to about 660 pounds. Glide ratio is around 30 to 1. And the air speeds I typically fly are probably around 30, 35 to 70 with a never exceed speed of 140. We fly at a club uh, name is uh, Texas Soaring Association. And we're about one hour south of Dallas, Texas, in a little town called Midothian, Texas. It's kind of growing up there, too. All right, you know, very important. Use a checklist. Go through your checklist. Don't make any mistakes. It's real important to use a checklist. They hammer you on this. It's just extremely important. Okay, he's hooking up the tow line. Open and close. He's going to pull on it just a bit. Okay, it looks secure. This is all very orchestrated, what we do. That guy out there is there to cover your back, because you can't see behind you, can you? The tow plane is going to take the slack out of the line for us. And that, that tow line is 200 feet, and for good reasons. It gives you an opportunity, in case something goes wrong, to get away and avoid the uh, tow plane. All right. We're just about ready to go. All right, I've moved the rudders back and forth to let him know we're ready. You've got to stay focused all the time right here. Very critical. No distractions. You keep flying. If you got a problem, pull the release and move to the right immediately. Allow the tow plane to accelerate and also get off the ground. At this point, we stay very focused on the tow plane. We don't want any distractions. Here are the numbers that we use for tow failures. At or below 200 feet, land straight ahead, maybe a little bit to the left or to the right. If the rope fails between 200 feet and 600 feet, we can land downwind. Tow failures above 600 feet, we can do what's called an abbreviated pattern, which just simply means we may not do all an exact base, final, and downwind, but the objective is we get back to the runway safely or safe landing. There are times when you can do a low altitude release, find that thermal you flew through, and go on up to altitude. If you do a low altitude release, trying to find that thermal, the important part is that you have a way out in case you don't find it. One problem with a low altitude release, looking for that thermal, you may not find it, so it doesn't give you a lot of time to work it or try to continue up in altitude. Now I'm trying to locate that thermal, and I'm not having much luck with it. I get a little bit on one side, but not enough. So again, I'm still working my way toward the runway, back to TSA if all fails. So at this point, I got one eyeball looking at the airport and another eyeball trying to fly. At this point, I can still make TSA either landing downwind or an abbreviated pattern. I'm still in a search pattern trying to find that thermal again, but it looks like I'm not having much luck. Here's some of the numbers we use when we're flying. If you're 3,000 feet above the ground, you want a general landing area. If you're 2,000 feet above the ground, you want a Pacific landing area. From 1,200 feet to 1,500 feet, you might have an alternative landing area. Okay, at about 1,500 feet, I'm working my way back toward the airport on a left downwind for runway 18. 
So at this point, I'm basically running out of time. I'm a little bit low as I approach TSA on the left downwind. So what are my options? What could I do? Well, maybe one would be an abbreviated pattern. An abbreviated pattern simply means I might do a downwind, a base, and a final. It may not be all exact, but the objective is I will land back to the airport safely. It's all part of your training. So now I'm thinking, well, my abbreviated pattern is probably not an option at this point. So what's next? Well, that's easy. I'm going to land downwind and make that runway safely. Part of your training is downwind landings, so it's really not that big of a deal. It might seem like it, but after a while, you'll get comfortable with it. Landing downwind means I'm going to have a higher ground speed on touchdown. Again, it's just part of your training. I've got full spoilers activated. We've got a long runway here. It's over 3,000 feet, so it's not a problem. And for additional safety, I decided to land in the grass and not down that runway. This will give me more additional drag to slow down much faster than landing on that asphalt runway. After touchdown, we're going to continue to fly the airplane. I'm holding full up elevator, keeping those wings level as long as I can. Stop. And that's all there is to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And check out my other flying glider videos on YouTube. Our glider club is about a mile south of Dallas, Texas, in Midlothian, Texas. If you want more information, just look up texassoaring.org for more information on our glider club. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.